I was wondering. Light of the day. Would you pass the salt? Mm -hmm. Thank you. That, that's what I meant, the sugar. <laughs> you want the plat du jour? Uh, no, no, not, not today. How's the crumb cake? Fine. I'll have the crumb cake. Can I hotten up your coffee? Oh, no, thanks. Mmm. Is that delicious? Mmm, mmm. That's the best crumb cake I've ever tasted. Mmm. I bet they bake it here. You think they bake it here? Uh, I don't know. Oh, I bet they do. I bet they do. It, it, it just tastes so fresh. Here, have a taste. Oh, no, thank you. No, 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 go on. Here's a fresh fork. Take it from this end. I didn't touch it. Just take a taste. It's really good. Mm. Mm. Huh? Mm. Right, very good. Yeah, see? Here, let me give you half. No, 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 there I don't. There you go. There's your fork. Thank you. I'm, um, I'm new in town. Oh. I've, uh, just come from Minneapolis. Rent a small house. Eat, uh, most of my meals alone. I don't even know you. <laughs> why, why am I telling you all this? <laughs> <laughs> well, because you're new in town. Just come here from Minneapolis. Rent a small house. Eat most of your meals alone. <laughs> Something else? No, no, that's fine. That's fine. Great crumb cake. Yeah. You bake it here? We don't even slice it here. Yeah. Have a good day. What? No. Uh, yeah. Yeah, I will. Uh, um, uh, uh, you too. Uh, goodbye. Uh, give me the check. Check. Good morning. Here's Billy Newman's stuff from New Mexico. Ah. Right now you have a meeting for the Sunday magazine cover. And at 11.30 you're supposed to do that food section Oh, this is clinic. wonderful copy. Really good stuff. People from the East swarming to New Mexico for the Cherimoya Arts Festival. Get Billy on the phone for me, will you? Hi, Vince. Good morning, Irene. What do you got? The art for the Sunday cover. Mmm, they're good. Hey, you know, we're still having problems printing it. It's that paper. Mm, color just runs all over that rough stuff they've been giving you. Well, what can I do? That's what they give me. What can you do? Make a fuss. Kick and scream. They want a beautiful magazine section, and they stick you with cheap paper that won't hold a color photo. They won't give you anything without a fight around here. Do what you can, huh? Okay. No luck with Billy Newman, Irene. 
Did you try the motel? Yeah, I tried the motel. I left a message. Well, don't worry about it. She'll get back to us. Oh, she's really caught it. The artists are from Taos. Students from Chiramoya College acting as guides. The sounds of chamber music over the desert. Oh, it smells hot and sunny in Pueblo in New Mexico. Mm. You can almost feel the heat. It's hot in here. The air conditioning on a blink again? Yeah, for about an hour. Well, why doesn't somebody open a window? Because when they put the air conditioning in, they nail the windows shut. Mm. You know what happened to me this morning? What? I met a woman. Oh, I didn't actually meet her. I followed her into a coffee shop. We sat next to each other on two stools at the counter. And all the time we were sitting there, I felt her knee pressing against mine. When she got up to leave, her knee was still pressing mine. It was the iron pole that holds the counter up. <laughs> I think I got a ridge in my kneecap. <laughs> Maybe it's better you didn't meet her. Why? Because what would happen? You'd ask her out, she'd get to know you, you'd get to know her, you'd get to like her, and she'd dump you. City desk. Yeah. Who? Billy who? You sound like a girl. Oh, I see. You work on the other side. Why'd you call me? Who? Herbert Linton. Yeah, I heard of him. He's a writer. He writes books. Plays. That's right, plays. Uh, Pulitzer Prize. What about it? Murdered? Hold it. Rossi. What'd you say your name was, kid? Billy Newman. Uh, my editor, Irene Mott, sent me out here to cover the Cherimoya Arts Festival. Yeah, right. Um, they discovered Linton's body late last night at, at, uh, 10, 10.38, exactly. Uh, he was, oh, just a second, just a second. Uh, he was shot in the bathtub. I mean in the chest, uh, found in the bathtub. Yeah, they've arrested his lover, named Victor Gary, a painter, age 37, a dress. That's fine, kid. Good work. Uh, what's the weather? Get packed, you go to New Mexico. Herbert Linton's been murdered. Linton? I thought he was dead. Well, you're right. Uh, no, look, look, I don't want an official weather report. I just want to know how my reporter should dress when he goes down there. In the 80s? Good work. Thanks for calling. What are you waiting for? Get on a plane. You think I can pick up and leave town just like that? I have Esther at home. So call her and tell her you're leaving. She doesn't answer the phone too well. She's my dog. Listen, Billy, it's a terrific story. I'm sure the city desk is tickled that you're right there on it. What? Come on, you're not serious. Why would he send a reporter? What did he think you are, kidney beans? Look, Billy. Don't worry about it. It's just absurd to send another reporter down to Cherimoya when you're right there. You just sit tight and let me handle it. Goodbye. Kathy, get me this Lou Grant person, will you? Oh. City desk. Lou Grant? Uh, this is Irene Mott. We haven't met, but I met her today, and I'm calling about Billy Newman, who is in... Yeah, I already talked to her. She did a nice job. You can tell her to come home. Uh, well, that's the point. Billy's right there on the scene, and she can cover story. No, no, she can't cover the story. I'm sending a reporter down. A reporter? What do you think Billy is, kidney beans? What's that mean? I don't know what it means. My father used to say it to me. That's an odd expression. Well, I never question it. Why should you? Anyway, the point is, Billy is in... The point is, we do breaking stories on this side. I know what you do on that side. I'm well aware of what you do there. Then we have no problem. Uh, you don't horn in on my stories, and I promise I won't interfere with your coverage of um, how Ann Sheridan does her hair. <laughs> Ann Sheridan? I don't care what you write about as long as it's not what we write about. Now, I have a murder story to cover, and I'm sending a reporter to do it. So you can tell your girl to come on home. Oh, look, to begin with, she's not my girl. She's a reporter, as much a reporter as anyone on your side. Uh, some other time, okay? I've got a paper to put out. Oh, really? And what do you think we do here? I have no idea. I've never been in a hen house. Oh! do have some pretty good people over there. I'm trying to run a city room here. I don't want other people horning in on our territory. Oh, come on, Irene. It's not worth mm. getting angry about. You're right. You're right. 
Uno, dos, tres, cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. Hmm. I'll kill him. You want dessert? We got custard, rice pudding, pumpkin pie, and chocolate cheesecake. Nothing. Good choice. I'll have coffee. Yeah. You know that table? Yeah. You know that one over there at that table? In the booth in the corner? Mm hmm. You know one of the three people in the You know them? Yeah, they work on a trip. No kidding. Hmm. Hi. Hi. Having lunch? Yes. <laughs> Me too. You work at the drift. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. Wonderful. <laughs> Listen, I'll have my coffee over there at that table. I know that one. You want to pay your check now? Oh, sure, sure. How much is it? Let's see. Roast beef and beer, two twenty-five. Okay, okay, okay. There you go. Keep the change. Yeah, coffee, thirty cents. Oh, yeah. There you go. The rest is for you. And six percent for the governor. How much is the check? Just a minute. Just a minute. You just blew your tip. Are you Joe Rossi? Yeah. I didn't know how I was going to recognize you, but it's interesting how I picked you up. Well, from the typewriter, of course. It's not my typewriter, it's my toilet kit. Where can I get a car? Oh, I've got a car. I'll drive you to Cherimoya. Who are you? I'm Billy Newman. Oh. I'm from the Trib. I'm working on the Linton story. Where's a good place to stay in Cherimoya? Well, I'm staying at the Cherimoya Inn, which is right near the college. It's just fine. It's, uh, it's very clean. How's the food? Any decent restaurants? I guess so. Actually, I haven't had much time for big dinners lately. You know, I'm covering the Linton murder. I heard you the first time. Listen, Rossi. I know you've been sent to do the breaking story, but Why I got I my notes. your car? This way you won't have to turn it in. My car? What'll I use? What do you need a car for? You're taking that plane right there. No. No, I'm not. I'm still on assignment. I'm covering the arts festival. Look, the point is, I can't rent a car. I lost my license someplace. Where? If I knew where, it wouldn't be lost, would it? Well, look, I'll drive, and while we're driving, I can brief you. Is there anything to do there at night? Hay rides, illegal fishing, sing-alongs? Listen, I'm not the welcome wagon. Ah. Uh, all right, all right, where's the car? He moved here seven years ago after his last flop. He said he was through with New York and the theater, and he was going to write books. Oh, he's written a few articles since he got here, mostly about Indians. Uh, they're about the effect of Indian mysticism on his psyche. What's your name again? Billy Newman. Billy. I can't feature a reporter named Billy. How about a president named Jimmy? You know, it's really Billy Joe. But uh, I knocked off the last part to make it sound more professional. It didn't work. He admired the Indians, but he said that they made him feel even more alone because they had a tribe to belong to while he... Do you mind if I play the radio? Am I boring you? Not at all. I'm not listening. You know, you don't have to use any of this. I just thought that Look, we could... this is my story. I thought we could work together. I don't work that way. See if you can find something without banjos. Why does it have to be Hawaii? Aren't there beaches near Stanford? Well, if all of your friends are going to Hawaii, they probably have richer parents than you do. I'm not made of money, you know. 
I don't care if it's a cliche, it's true. Most cliches are true, that's why they're cliches. I'll come back. Listen, listen, honey, I have a meeting. I'll call you when I get back home. Yeah, yeah, bye-bye. How do you do it, Irene? How do you handle your daughters? I don't handle them, Charlie. We made a deal. They promised to grow up, and I promised to let them. So far, it's worked out fine. Mm -hmm. Wish I could say as much for my job. Problem? It's about the Linton murder. I have a reporter in New Mexico, Billy Newman. Yeah, I know about that. Lou Grant sent Joe Rossi for the breaking story. Right, right, and that's fine. Except Joe Rossi just told Billy Newman to go home. He did? Yes, and she's been there for two weeks now, Charlie. She's familiar with the terrain. She was there when it happened. It doesn't make any sense at all to send her home now. Well, you've got a point there. Okay. Now, Rossi can do his breaking story, and Billy can do the background. Makes sense. Have you talked to Lou Grant about it? Only on the phone, and he's not buying it. On the phone? Wait a minute. You mean you haven't met him? No. You should meet him! Why? Why? Because you love each other, that's why. Lou Grant's an old friend of mine. Hey, Lou. Lou, listen, I'm talking to Irene Mott, editor of the Today Sex. Uh, wait, wait, wait a minute. Uh, Lou, she's, she's, uh, she's here with me now, and I, I think it'd be a good idea if you both met each other. <laughs> so simmer down, Lou, please. I, I, I really think that you should come on over and resolve this right now. Just take a minute and write. He's dying to meet you. Right. Look. I just don't have time to fool around with you. Oh, my God. Lou Grant, I'd like you to meet Irene Mott. Irene. <laughs> That's your name, Irene. Huh? I have a cousin named Irene. Everyone calls her Irene. Ah, uh, well, everyone calls me Irene. Yeah, well, we met. We know each other, Irene and me. <laughs> we met before. I didn't know that. I, who would have thought that you worked here? I mean, I found out this afternoon at McKenna's, but I didn't know you were Irene Mott. <laughs> You run the women's section. Uh, we don't call it that anymore, Mr. Grant. Lou, Lou, Lou. Call me Lou. Oh, well, I will if you call me Irene. I mean, first we meet at a coffee shop, <laughs> then again we meet at McKenna's, and here we are in what's-his-name's office. <clears throat> I can't tell you how happy I am to see you again. Oh. Hey, why don't you tell Lou what's on your mind, Irene? Oh, uh, right, good idea. Why don't we sit down? Hmm. Uh, now, I have a reporter in New Mexico. Oh, sure, sure. I know, I know, I know. She called me about the Linton murder. Damn good word. Oh, well, yeah. glad you feel that way. Now, I know you sent a reporter down to Chermoya. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Joe Rossi. Uh, he'll do the breaking story. Right. And Billy's gonna stay and do the background story. Now, Lou. Rossi won't stand for it. Yeah, maybe he will, Lou. Let me put it this way. I won't let Rossi stand well, for now it. Now, you're being unreasonable. It's absurd not to let her stay. She's coming back. She is staying. We'll see about that. We certainly will. Give me Rossi, wherever he is. What's the matter with you? What's the matter with me? Rough and tasting women, that's what's the matter with me. Lo, she's really... Why do they have to come horning in on our side? Huh? Do I go over there asking if I can write articles on food specials or movie reviews or home decorating, huh? Lo, Irene Mott has probably done more for this paper than anyone else on it. When I first came here, the women's section was just that. But Irene has really turned things around. It's the most vital section of the paper. And the proof of it is that nobody calls it the women's section anymore. Hello. Rossi. Listen, is that girl from the women's section still hanging around? Well, you tell her to get out of there. You're covering that story alone. Billy? You're staying in Terramoya. Let Rossi do the breaking story, the sidebar, the second follow-up, the third, whatever. You do the background. I want to know all about Herbert Lynn. What was he doing in New Mexico? What was he writing? Who were the people around him? Background, Billy. Send me background. <sighs> crumb cake. I beg your pardon? He liked the crummy crumb cake. All right, folks. Can you have your attention, please? <clears throat> Let me run this down for you. Herbert Linton, L-I-N-T-E-N, -E was last seen alive at the Aurora restaurant just seven miles out of Cherimoya. He's in the company of one Victor Gary, G-A-R-I-E, age 37, a painter, 
a residence in Santa Fe. Uh, Linton had consumed a large quantity of alcohol. In what form, Sheriff? Uh, vodka martinis. How many? The lab hasn't determined that yet. They're counting the olives in his stomach. The two men argued quite loudly, using a good deal of profanity. And Gary got up from the table, leaving his dinner unfinished. Linton remained alone. He then left the restaurant at approximately 9.12. It's 9.12, approximately. Right. He took a cab home, arriving there at approximately 9.27. Approximately. <clears throat> the body was found at 10.30 that night by a student, one Cecile Tormsby, T-O-R-M-S-B-Y, who getting no response from a knock at the door and seeing that the rear window had been broken, telephoned the sheriff's office. Linton's body was found in the bathroom. Was he dressed? Fully dressed. Hey, get that cat out of here. God, this cat first stops me up. Is that all cats or just gray tabbies? He was dead from a gunshot wound from a 22 caliber weapon. The bullet entered the chest, exited out his back, and lodged in the wall of pride, <clears throat> about three inches above the bathtub. What about the gun? Did you find it? Yes, we did. We found it outside the bathroom door. Was it Linton's gun? No. No, it was registered in 1965 to Victor Gary. Sheriff, uh, how do you know that Linton and Gary were lovers? Well, everybody knew that. What are you doing here? I'm doing background for the Today section. I thought you went back. There are no more questions, folks. That wraps it up. Well, wait a minute. Oh. I heard that Gary hired Quentin Morgan to defend him. You say so, Mr. Rossi? Well, that's pretty big stuff, Quentin Morgan, coming all the way from San Francisco. You say so, Mr. Rossi? Sounds like Gary feels he's a really heavyweight lawyer, doesn't it? I don't know. Is that how it sounds? Mind putting that down, Miss? Oh, sorry. I wasn't thinking. Just don't touch anything, okay? You bet. Hi, sweetie. Oh, okay if I pet the cat. Listen, um, would you mind reading the uh, title of the book on the night table? You can just read it from where you are. Uh, Aspects of Depression. Want to know who wrote it? No. Good. I can't pronounce it. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Lou! Lou, come on in! Come on in! Grab yourself a sandwich. Sit down. Come on. Thank you. Oh, Come on, help What's going on? Once a month, we all get together, and we have sandwiches, shoot the breeze. Have a sandwich. Shoot the breeze. Hmm. Anybody want this roast beef sandwich? No. Came on raisin bread. Hmm? See, well, it's a kind of an informal way of catching up on what we've all been doing. Now, Irene here feels that there's some unnecessary infighting going on inside the paper. Irene, why don't, why don't you take the floor? Okay, thanks, Charlie. Uh... I think there may be some people here who uh, don't quite know what we do over in the Today section. Hey, I, I, I know all that. I'm not just talking to you, Mr. Grant. Hmm. Now, at Today, we do um, travel, book review, Sunday magazine, food, entertainment. Could you pass the uh, mustard, please? I'm talking to you, Mr. Grant. We, we try to get new attitudes on old subjects, so we move our desks around. We put travel people into book review, and we put theater people into TV. And that way, everybody gets into everybody else's field. And into everybody's hair. You know, 
I remember. Well, I used to work on a newspaper. All those things you were talking about, they used to go into what we call the women's section. Well, it isn't called that anymore. It's called today. Hmm. I wonder if you could tell me, you know that section where they talk about you know, football and about baseball and hockey and those things? Uh, Sports. That's it. Yeah, yeah. I wonder if you could tell me what that section is called today. The sports section. Oh, that's reassuring. I thought maybe they called it something else like uh, tomorrow or next Tuesday. Okay, Lou, I think you made your point. Now let Irene make hers. Well, okay, there was a time. There was indeed a time when the editor of the women's section was the publisher's wife. And she wore a big hat and white gloves, and uh, she thought of her job as a hobby. Mm. Well, today, that woman is as obsolete as the city editor who chomps on a cigar, talks out of the side of his mouth, and has a zipper that's never quite closed. Look, we've got all kinds of qualified people on this newspaper who can handle any kind of assignment. I've got people who can write for you. You've got people who can write for me. Thank you. Th thank you. But I really don't have a burning ambition to write an article on how to care for my rose garden. Neither do I. I'm allergic to roses. But if I had to write it, I could. No, let's, let's not argue. We're not arguing. I am. You see, I think one of the problems is that physically we're in two sections of the building. The new side and the today side. And that corridor is a long bridge in between and people are afraid to cross the bridge. Right. I agree. I agree. But we all work for the same newspaper. So does the guy who takes classified ads, but he doesn't want to cover a story. Oh, come on. Why shouldn't a writer from the city side do a Today story, huh? I'd like to see you cross over. Okay. Okay. Sure I will. When I want to write a story about roses. I don't believe it. No, it was pretty informal. We'd meet here or over at Herb's house, and, and sometimes at this cafe near the plaza. We generally work on a scene, then read it with the rest of the class and analyze it. Uh-huh. Oh, does anybody want some gum? No. No, thanks. Well, that's good. I don't have any. Does anybody want some lint? <laughs> no. What was he like? Hard to know. Not the kind of popular teacher that packs him in for the big lectures. But then you found out that he, he cared as much about his writing students as, uh, as he cared about his own work. If he thought you had something to offer, he made you feel like you could do more than you ever realized you could. He made you be better. What was he like the last couple of months? I mean, emotionally. Well, he was having a hard time. What do you mean? They weren't doing his plays. Herb always said, a play doesn't live until it's performed. And he just kept writing plays that nobody wanted to do. He called them his dead plays. You know, the awful thing about it was that he thought that they were better than other plays he'd written that were smash hits, that won awards. What did you think? Well, the new ones were... Well, they didn't seem to have any life. How about towards the end, the last week? Did he seem more nervous or anxious? No, just the opposite. How do you mean, opposite? Well, the last week, the last few times we met, he seemed very calm, tranquil. He just seemed so much better, so much more at peace with himself. It was nice. He was happy. Mr. Gary, I'm Joe Rossi. I want to thank you for letting me see you. You're seeing me only because I want to set the record straight. I don't like the way the newspapers have been handling this whole thing. Yes, I know what the newspapers have been saying. Sit down. So what do you want to tell me? I did not kill Herb. You had a big fight. Everybody heard it. Next thing, Linton's dead. God, I still can't believe it. You were lovers? We were friends, best friends. Not lovers? No. Not for the last year. Maybe 18 months. What happened between you? 
Herb was always fighting it. He never could accept it in himself. So he had dates with women. I didn't care. I respected his hang-ups. You don't have that hang-up? No. How come you met him that night? I just sold some of my paintings. My gallery in New York had contacted me that morning, and Herb and I were going to go celebrate after dinner at a restaurant. When I got there, he was in a rotten mood. Drunk? No. Not exactly, but he'd had enough drinks to make him nasty. We got to the table. You were at the table? He began to argue. About what? I don't know what. Whatever I said ticked him off. Whatever I didn't say ticked him off. I couldn't make any sense of it. I couldn't figure out what was bugging him. So then both of you began arguing. No, no, no. No, I, I know better than that. No dealing with him when he's in that kind of a mood. He was just insulting me, so trying to. Said I was insensitive. Stupid, said I. Didn't have any intuition. Then he began to attack my recent work. Said it was unimportant, uninspired, ugly, I don't know. Okay, so you're in the restaurant. He's goading you. Then what happened? Then it dawned on me. He was trying to get rid of me. You see, Herbert always said he never had the courage to leave anybody. He had to make them leave him. He wanted me to leave him. So I did. I said, all right, Herb, if you want me out, I'm out. It was your gun at the house. How did it happen to be there? I gave it to him for protection. He was afraid. Afraid of what? I don't know, prowlers, I guess. He didn't have anything to be afraid of. Well, apparently he did. He's dead. Did you read the story of the Rossi Farp in New Mexico? Yeah. What'd you think? I thought it was okay. What's the problem? That's the problem. It was just okay. I send Rossi out on a story like this, I expect a hell of a lot more than okay. What's the point, Lou? The point is that I think we have one too many people down there covering this story. Remember, Charlie, when we worked in Detroit, the doctor that murdered his mistress? Yeah. Okay. Everybody wanted to cover that story. We had a wishy-washy city editor that had a couple of reporters working on it. Get different angles, you know? Yeah. Okay. Now, we were so busy sidestepping each other, trying not to duplicate, that nobody noticed when the doctor confessed to a writer from another paper. You think that's what's happening there? I think this is not Rossi's best writing. I think that girl has something to do with it. You think she's beguiling him with her charms? I know he's not beguiling her with his. He doesn't have any. <laughs> Lou, I think you're making too much of this. If I know Rossi, he is trying to keep as much distance between them as possible. Lou, what is Shh, it? What, what is it? Rossi, relax. What? I didn't come in here to climb into the sack with you. Then get out. How'd you get in here? I lost the key to my room, so I, uh, I asked for the key to yours. <sighs> Gives you a nice feeling of security. I had to talk to someone. Oh, I know what you mean. I always feel like a little chat myself at uh, 20 after 4 in the morning. I just, I couldn't sleep. I couldn't sleep. Well, if you couldn't sleep, I'm certainly glad you woke me up. I mean, one thing I really don't want to do is be sleeping when you're having a hard time. Something's bugging me about the Linton murder. What? I'm not so sure it's murder. You want some gum? Gum? At 4.20 in the morning? Why don't you think so? Gut feeling. Uh-huh. I think I know who killed him. He did. Himself. Gut feeling? Uh-uh. My gut feeling's always wrong. Do you know what book he was reading at the end? Aspects of Depression. Oh, man. Oh, that sure is a great reason for suspecting suicide. If everybody who reads Aspects of Depression kills himself... There'd be about four people who would be dead. It wasn't one of your big bestsellers. Did you notice what was on his desk? What? Large envelopes. You know the kind that manuscripts come in? Plays? Returned to him from New York producers. He hadn't opened them. He hadn't even bothered to open them. Rejections. Can you imagine a man like Herbert Linton getting rejections? Okay, okay, okay. Let's say it is suicide. There's one problem. 
the house was broken into. Somebody broke the glass window in the back door and came into the house. Who? Who? Victor Gary. Why? Why not? He was angry enough. Hell hath no fury like a... Uh, <clears throat> and all that. That doesn't make him a murderer. No, it doesn't, does it? I want to find out more about Lynn. He was teaching a playwriting seminar around here. I want to talk to some of his students. I already did. They told me something really interesting. Very interesting. I wish you wouldn't crack your gum like that. It gives me a headache. Mm. Last week, right before he died, they said that he was suddenly very calm, quiet, tranquil, as if he was more peaceful than he had been for months. As though he'd come to a decision. Yes. Uh-huh. Get dressed. Ah, don't do that. I'm ticklish. On your ankle? That wasn't my ankle. Come on, get dressed. What do you mean, get dressed? I haven't finished sleeping. When are you getting up? Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Get up. So it seems he had every reason to commit suicide. More than anyone else had a reason to kill him. Sure, that's why he picked the big fight with Gary in the restaurant. Linton wanted Gary to walk out. He wanted Gary to hate him. So it might make it easier for him to take Linton's death. Makes sense. We're releasing Gary tomorrow. Because of what we said? No, no, because of the barium traces on Linton's hands. Barium? Yeah, barium traces on a hand means that the hand has fired a gun within 24 hours. Well, there you go. That's absolute proof Linton shot himself. Well, it's not absolute. Well, it's pretty good. But there are a couple things that don't fit. Like that broken window. Uh, if Linton shot himself, who broke into the house? Now, that's what's been bothering us. Us, too. I've been thinking about it all the way over here. Listen, is this crazy? I'm always losing my keys and having to bust into my own house. Once a neighbor even called the cops. Well, maybe that happened to Linton. He misplaced his keys, broke the window to get in. You mean that could be right? It's as good as anything we've come up with. Well, now all we have to do is find the keys and wrap the case. Whatever you say, Mr. Rossi. Now, where are the keys? If we knew that, they wouldn't be lost, would they? <laughs> <laughs> Can you find my driver's license? <laughs> I was really worried about you there for a while, Rossi. But that story you phoned in was good stuff. Much better than that garbage you sent in yesterday. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm sitting down. Go ahead, tell me. You gotta be kidding. No, I want to do it. I'm sharing my byline with Billy Newman. Share your byline. Look, she filled in the spaces, she didn't get in my way, she did a good background story. Fine, fine, we'll run the background story. No, it's more than that. I want to share the credit with her. She deserves it. All right, Rosing, it's your byline. Oh, and Lou. Yeah? My name comes first. Ah, uh, yeah. Rossi wants to share his byline with that girl. I think that's the most intimate he's ever been with a woman. Maybe when Rossi gets back, we should send him on this nursing home investigation. Why don't we send the girl? What girl? Newman, the one from the other side. She did a good job on this. Maybe we should get over here and see what she can do. Hmm. I'm for that. I'll have Charlie Hume take care of him. Why don't you call her yourself? Who, Newman? No, Irene. Um. I tell you, Billy, to get Mr. Wonderful to share his byline with you is a coup. It was terrific. The only disappointing part was the cops solved it before we did. Well, they generally do. But I'm very proud of you, Billy. Now, come on home fast. <laughs> Goodbye. Do you need anything else, Irene? Mm -mm, no, thanks. This is fine. Are you staying late tonight? Yeah, I think so. I've got a pile of stuff I haven't even touched. Okay. Well, I I'll see you tomorrow. Okay. Do we have anything interesting to eat around here? Like a candy bar? No. You want me to order you a sandwich? No. Maybe there's some yogurt in the kitchen. Go home. Go on. Bye-bye.
Good night, Irene. See you in the morning. Now, how did I know I'd find the editor of what is definitely no longer the women's section in the kitchen? I better drink. Why? Thank you. Mm-hmm. You drink like a man. So do you. <laughs> Want some eggs? Oh, no, no, no. Uh, don't bother. I am not hungry. Uh, what are you making? Western. With chili and peppers? Mm-hmm. Nothing like it. Feels the taste of the eggs. Yeah, well, I like it really hot. How hot? Uh, when my bald spot begins to sweat. Ah, uh, I brought you something. What? Plastic roses. My favorite. Look, I'll tell you what I'm doing here. Mm -hmm. You're a girl in New Mexico. Uh, you're a reporter in New Mexico. Newman? Yeah? I want to come over to our side for a while. Do some stories. Wow. Yeah. All right. I'll suggest it to her. Is that all you can say? Oh, excuse me. I'm not enthusiastic. You're taking away my best reporter, and I didn't thank you properly. Well, uh, I did walk all the way over here. Was it a long walk? Endless. You'll get used to it. You know, Rini, we've had breakfast together. We've had lunch together. Here's to our first dinner together. You know, Lou, huh? I really hate the name Rini. You'll get used to it. 